Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Objective. I'm your host Jay and I want to thank you for tuning in to another episode of the podcast. Um, It's been quite some time actually since I released one, but I have been paying attention. I have been listening. I've been fully emerged in, or I should say submerged in uh, current events and what's been going on. Um, the other series that I have going on, Let's Talk Headlines, I will be releasing uh, another episode. And I know we have a lot to catch up on. A lot. If you guys haven't been keeping track of Let's Talk Headlines, uh, just make sure to check out that playlist here on SoundCloud. And again, I also upload uh, my content to the YouTube channel, The Objective Podcast. I don't know if I'm getting old. Well, I guess I am. Each of us are, but it's becoming more noticeable because when I go to the gym now, I'm not only listening to music or things that get me kind of pumped and in that motivated mindset. Um, I'm actually listening to Dennis Prager when I'm in the gym, uh, when I'm lifting my heavy weights, I'm listening to Dennis Prager. And it just hit me the the other day uh, when I was working out and I was listening to talk radio, essentially. I was listening to his podcast and it does about the same thing that good music would do for me. Um, So I don't know if that is an indication that I'm getting older or I don't know what it is, but I just want to thank my buddy here, um, Alex, for introducing me to Dennis Prager. He introduced me. uh, He actually brought up his name maybe a little bit more than a year ago. Uh, but I actually uh, began listening and following his uh, his podcasts uh, several months ago. So uh, I want to thank uh, Alex for that. And also, I, I need to thank Alex for creating the logo. I've been meaning to do that. Um, if you guys go to my SoundCloud profile or if you go to my YouTube channel, you're going to see my logo. Um, and that was created by Alex. He's an awesome guy, supports the channel. And uh, I just want to shout you out, man. Thanks a lot for the support. I want to start this podcast off with a quote. I have a book here. Uh, Usually when I read books and stuff, I highlight different quotes that stick out to me that are memorable, uh, that hold deep meaning. And I would, you know, usually write an excerpt. Sometimes I literally just write down the quote and then who wrote it. Um, And then I go through it maybe months later and just kind of reflect on them. Uh, Today's quote Um, and it is March. uh, Wow. I said March. It's actually May um, 7th, 2017. Today's quote is by Frank A. Clark. And it actually is quite fitting with the topic that I have today. The quote says this, it says, we find comfort among those who agree with us, growth among those who don't. I'll read that again. We find comfort among those who agree with us and growth among those who don't. Recently, I um, was listening to an interview. I, it wasn't actually so much of an interview as it was a lecture um, by the social psychologist Jonathan Haidt. I hope I said that name right. It's actually H-A-I-D-T. Jonathan Haidt. Um, brilliant man and actually a breath of fresh air when you think of what's been happening to uh, universities, if we can call them that, in the West. The nation has not only become derelict of um, intellectual growth, not only does it shun intellectual growth, it promotes silencing of the first amendment it shuns free thought and free speech it it shuns certain ideologies that do not appear to be politically correct so jonathan Haidt he he was speaking about the culture of victimhood and how that culture seemingly um, has overtaken our universities but it's not it's not so much that universities are the 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 birthing place of this culture. Um, this culture, the, the the victimhood culture, and I know a lot of people 
will accuse me of being polarizing by saying this, but I can explain this, maybe not in this video, but the whole mentality of victimhood, it stems from the left. If you do agree with me, if you, sorry, if you do disagree with me, I would implore you to send me a message either on YouTube or on SoundCloud. I'm going to get an email going so you folks can send me um, emails and I can answer them. But the whole the whole idea of victimhood culture that that stems from the left side of the political arena. And that's why you have um, students and universities demanding safe spaces um, that's why um, when conservative groups on uh, on certain campuses uh, try to invite certain speakers such as, um, let's say, Anne Cochier, um, Gavin from uh, Rebel Media, uh, Gavin McInnes, uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, Stephen Crowder, when, whenever these these conservative groups invite these conservative speakers and in some cases polemicists you have violence from antifa um different uh liberal well i don't want to say i don't i don't want to group liberals in the same cesspool as the left because they are different but you have violence coming from the left you have property damage, you have vi literal violence, you have um, assaults, and a, assault with a weapon, you have a, a number and a multitude of uh, these responses coming from the left. And the, the, the response, this response is stemming from speech, speech that they do not like, that they, they don't see as worthy um, of having a platform. Uh, Berkeley, we've we've spoken about Berkeley in the Let's Talk headline series and Berkeley. The students and not only students, but I'm sure individuals um, in the community, they come and they destroy the campus when they hear that when they heard that Milo Yiannopoulos was coming to speak a gay uh, Republican or conservative male. And when you have you when you have this this culture of victimhood and political correctness in a place as sacred as a university where um, the sole purpose of a university is to challenge your thought, to challenge the way you think. The, a university is not a safe space. So, as a matter of fact, the only safe space um, that should be required on a university is a safe space from physical violence. When it comes to ideas, and the dichotomy of certain ideas, we as young people, well, I shouldn't say we because I'm getting a little up there, but young people in university who, have, who attend uh, these, 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 these prestigious campuses um, to learn and to grow and to debate ideas, that is the beauty of university. But now, and I think Dennis Prager calls universities education centers. Now people are going to university to bolster how they already feel. They're going to university to feel comfortable and there's no growth in comfort. And so Jonathan, he was talking about victimhood culture and he, he, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, contrasted it with, uh, honor culture and honor culture. Yes. It may appear to be uh, a little outdated, but it kind of, it's, it's interesting to look at the way that um, mankind, or I should say the West, is regressing. A lot of people think that we're progressing. And in order to progress, we need to have these safe spaces. We need to shelter people. We need to make sure everyone feels good. That is not progression. That is comfort. And in comfort, there is no growth. And so in the honor culture, when someone did something to threaten or to directly attack your honor, um, you did something about it. You, the onus was on you to defend your honor. Um, and whether that was from a duel, <laughs> and like I said, this is outdated, whether that was from a duel uh, where you are literally fighting with somebody to the death, 
to defend your honor, to defend your family. Honor culture, um, it's something where, where your honor is your responsibility. And if someone tarnishes or taints that honor, it's your responsibility to clear that up because honor was held in high regard. Now, the victimhood culture is one where when individuals feel that they are hurt or they feel that they are wronged, they seek aid from a higher entity. They seek aid from authority in order to shield them and protect them. And that's what you see a lot on campuses. If something that is said is is wrong or what we deem uh, politically incorrect, we go to the authority on the campus and we demand that their program is shut down. A case in point, what you've been seeing with conservative uh, speakers. A life lesson that we can learn by just looking at nature, by looking at, let's let's say, blacksmithing. In order to make a strong blade, a blacksmith bends the steel and beats the steel over and over again, compressing it into something very strong and sturdy. So that when it has to be put to use, it won't break and it won't shatter. As literal as that is, it's also very philosophical. And universities are seemingly doing their best to sabotage the future and future generations. We don't want to live in a glass house We want to be able to challenge different ideas, challenge our own comfort levels, because that's how we are going to grow. You can the the world is a very cruel place. As nice as we want to make the world as comfortable as we want to um, feel in society, the world is a very cruel and vicious place, not only from a physical perspective standpoint but the world is a very vicious place in an ideological standpoint and you can't go through life sheltered because there is no growth in comfort so my challenge to you is to look at the beliefs that you hold look at the morals and the values that you hold as a person and don't for a second characterize them as infallible but instead challenge them research them research opposing views and then may fact not feeling help you navigate through different ideologies now i personally My political views and my stances are grounded in my Christian beliefs. That's where my moral comes from. My morals, my values, uh, the way that I see the world is through a a scope and a perspective of Christianity. And I understand and I can respect and I can appreciate the fact that that's not the same for everybody. Not there, there are some conservatives who view the world with similar ideals who are not Christian. The secular conservatism is something that's real and actually on the uprising, right? So my, my, my challenge here in closing is not to be afraid of different views. Don't for a second, and we've spoken about this, don't for a second be influenced by groupthink. Try your best to be, um, um, be very adamant and intentional about neglecting group thing that is something that plagues the left and for those of us who are on the right do not for a second think that you are immune to group thing we're human we're very fallible and that's why the greatest and wisest course of action when it comes to ideology values and beliefs is to make it your objective to be objective. Have a good night, and thanks for listening in.